My name is Shaheem Jackson, and this is a great time to be a CUNY student. CUNY is already the top urban university in the country, and it just keeps on getting better. Enrollment is up, academic standards are high, and CUNY graduates are in demand in the New York City workplace. Employers want us. Why? Because CUNY students are taught the critical skills needed to achieve success in college and in our careers. The CUNY proficiency exam, the CPE, which all CUNY students must take and pass to graduate, is a vital part of this success story. In this program, we'll give you an overview of the CPE, how it was developed, the nuts and bolts of the test, how it's scored, how you sign up for it, the extensive resources available to you, and tips for taking the test. We'll talk to the many CUNY faculty involved with the CPE and students who have taken it. We'll also meet successful people in the workplace who use these skills. Hopefully you'll come away feeling more comfortable with the test because you'll see that the CUNY proficiency exam is a natural part of your academic experience at CUNY. The proof? Most students pass it. Now what exactly is a CPE? Let's talk with people who were involved with the exam. Well, the CP is a chance for students to show that they are uh, what we call academically literate. What the CP looks for, or is trying to get our students to be ready for, a certain level of reading skills, writing skills, critical thinking skills, the ability to look at information, you know, look at a chart, analyze a graph, to be able to make sense of information. Every student has to take the CPE. Uh, Associate degree students have to pass it in order to get their degrees. Bachelor's degree students have to pass it by the 60th credit. It's also a graduation requirement for them. So the CPE prepares a student to go on, whether it's going to be at a bachelor's degree or a graduate degree or even in the workforce. The CUNY proficiency exam is in many ways just another example of what you've been doing your whole college career. In some ways, it's just a natural extension of what you've been doing for your major. CPE is the end result of what happens in between, from the time the student comes in to the time the student leaves. And what happens in between, that's what CPE is measuring. I was told that it was this big test. You had to study very hard for it in order to pass. But I realized that it was just another examination, another assessment of my skills that I had accumulated along my path towards graduation. Everybody thinking that, oh, it's going to be so hard, it's going to be so hard. But once you, even if you did English 101, it, it was easy. Once you know the format, everything it was, it was not as difficult as, as we were led to believe. If you've gone through your curriculum and you've been a student in good academic standing, more often than not, you'll do well. In fact, most students pass the CPE. In fact, overwhelmingly students pass the CPE, although some students need more than one try. You will not find yourself alone in taking the test. Uh, you will know by the 45th credit that you have developed the kind of skills that we are assessing. But if you think you need to learn more about the exam and maybe have some greater practice in even taking the exam, CUNY has many resources available to you that will help you to be successful in the test. Let's discuss critical thinking and how it's already a part of the courses you've been taking. Students come to college oftentimes not simply to receive information but also to question it. Critical thinking asks students to take a look, a hard look, at, at what they're being asked to learn and determine whether or not there is validity to look at information and make decisions from them. What it is you will do with the information that you've read, whether it's in a chart table, whatever, or it's, if it's just words, you, you have to be able to analyze it. The CPE focuses on reading, reading comprehension, reading analysis. And how does that play in our nursing course? Well, we have to read the textbook. The students have to understand what they're reading and answer questions based on the critical thinking process. Speech is really uh, has a great deal to do with critical thinking because when you prepare for a speech you need to create an outline and an outline absolutely requires that you understand how to develop ideas, how to break down ideas into smaller units, 
how to order ideas and how to group ideas that belong together. The CPE, it's really like your basic class. You read the reading, be prepared to talk about it, except you're just writing out your ideas and you'll be set. These skills will also prepare you to be successful in the city's workplace, no matter what industry you go into, and to deal with the fast-changing technological world. Let's talk with some successful professionals who work in different industries in the city. It's actually more difficult to write one paragraph, to synthesize a lot of information and put together one paragraph that makes sense. It's probably very easy to just, uh, oh, just regurgitate uh, reams and reams of paper, but who's going to read that? So, so you really have to be able to uh, be able to get uh, the information put together in a very succinct manner, uh, get to the cogent points that are important to individuals, uh, so that way it's going to grab their attention. So, so that's why this whole piece around critical reading, critical thinking, critical writing is very important. The more information the better and the three R's reading, writing and critical thinking if you'll, if you'll include that as part of the three R's uh, I have massive amounts of, um, of data to digest uh, using charts as one of them but just raw reading material and staying up with current events in the world is, is crucial to especially to the gold market. We conducted labor market studies and we held a number of in-depth discussions with employers and invariably regardless of the industry we um, we talked to employers were looking for people with critical thinking skills people with good writing skills people with good communication skills people with good quantitative analysis skills the skills that I have to know in order to pass the CPE exam are like something that everyone needs to know in, in every business or every department or wherever they work, they have to be able to communicate effectively in the business field. When you're given, let's say, a proposal or a project or a summary, um, you have to look at that, you have to understand all of the information, and you have to give a supervisor an answer on what information you were able to get out of that, you know, out of that paper, out of that literature. Next, we'll look at how the CPE was developed. The CUNY proficiency exam was developed by faculty. It came uh, out of a need that faculty, particularly faculty in upper division courses, felt uh, to define the skills that students really needed for success in their courses. And uh, the test was extensively piloted on CUNY students uh, so that we got a lot of feedback from student responses as this was going on. The test has what we call face validity. That means that when a teacher looks at it and when students look at it, they say, gee, this is kind of like the assignment I got when I had to write a paper last term or this is like the assignment that I get when I'm preparing for tests. So it grows right out of classroom experience of both teachers and students. You're required to take the exam after you've completed 45 credits. CUNY gives you three chances to take it. Most students pass it after the first or second time. When I found out I passed, I was happy, elated. It's not that hard, it's not, don't, just don't stress about it, you'll be fine. I felt relieved. I felt that uh, I had been waiting for an answer. You know, it's like, will I graduate? Will I not? Did I get enough sleep? But when I found out that I passed and there wasn't even any question of whether I passed, you know, I was just so glad. I rejoiced with my other colleagues. They had all passed as well. And I was just glad to have that behind me so that I could move forward in my career. The first time I took the CPE exam, I failed it. Um, terrible experience, but it was kind of a wake up call. And Taking the workshops helped, so I took the exam second time and I passed. The great majority of students at BMCC and across CUNY pass the CPE. They pass it on their first attempt. But what's perhaps more interesting or more remarkable is that over the course of one academic year, over 92% of the students pass the CPE. So that means you might not pass it on your first time, but by your second or third time, you probably will. The CUNY proficiency exam was partially designed so that it would be as fair as possible to ESL or ESOL students, English uh, for speakers of other languages. Most ESL students, if they come in, uh, if they study for the test, if they go to their school's test preparation uh, workshops, 
most of them are likely to pass. Most ESL students pass the CPE. If not the first time, definitely the second time. Before I take the CPE, I have to go to the workshops. Uh, I attend the workshops for the tax one, tax two, uh, they teach you about how to read the graph. Then I passed it. The CPE is not meant to hold you back but it's actually a way to prove that you are ready to go on to the next level. It's a way of kind of evaluating your academic success so far. And it's also a way of making little corrections if there's a problem in your academic career so that you can fix them and again move on to the next level. The CPE doesn't just look at how well our students are doing, it's also asking a very simple question, how well are our faculty doing? We have, uh, I think, done a tremendous job in this college to get everyone to see that it is not just the student taking the CPE. It's really about us as a college providing the opportunity within our curriculum and the support services that we give them so in the end when the student takes the test they are measuring the effectiveness of BMCC as a college. Up next, Professor Ken Anderson, an experienced teacher on preparing for the CPE, gives us the nuts and bolts of the test. The CPE examination is broken up into two parts, task one and task two. The entire examination should take you approximately four hours. Let's first now talk about task one. Task one tests your ability to analyze and synthesize information from two independent readings. You will receive a long reading, approximately eight to ten pages, two or three weeks before the examination. On the day of the examination, you will receive a second reading. This reading will be approximately a page to a page and a half long. Your responsibility will be to combine the information from these two different sources into one coherent essay. You will have two hours to complete task one. Task two tests your ability to analyze and interpret information that is presented to you in graphic form. This is the type of information that would be presented in newspaper articles, textbooks, and in your everyday life. You will be given a short reading and two figures that will be represented as figure one and figure two. Your task will be to analyze the reading and to take out the information from that reading. Next, you will have to determine whether or not those statements that are contained in the reading are supported or challenged or partially challenged and supported by the data contained in figures one and two. You will have one hour to complete this section. Task one and task two will total three hours. However, the administration of the examination will take slightly longer. Therefore, you must allocate four hours for the examination. Now, let's talk about how the CPE is scored. Task 1 is worth two-thirds of your score, and Task 2 is worth one-third. There are two independent graders for each task. They will use a different scoring rubric, also known as a scoring guide, for each part of the exam. The scoring rubrics are available in the CPE Student Information Booklet. Let's hear more about how the CPE is scored. For each part of the CPE, there are specific criteria that are used in scoring the test you would recognize the criteria right away because they are the way we have been talking about the skills that are tested uh, on this exam. You'll be scored on a scale from one to six on each of the criteria for both tasks one and two. Let's talk about what is a passing score on the CPE. A passing score on the CPE is a composite of scores on task one and task two. So there isn't a separate passing score for either task one or task two. The overall passing score for the exam is a 34, and it's achieved in any category, generally speaking, by scoring in the three or four range in some combination across the categories of task one or across the scale in task two. The best way of understanding what you have to do in order to pass the test is, again, to consult the booklets where there are sample responses 
of real CUNY students to real CPE exams. And there you can see what it takes to write an essay that would get a score of four or an essay that would get a score of three or to answer task two in a way that would get you scores of four or three. The scoring of both task one and task two will be explored in greater detail in other programs. So when do you start taking the CPE? The CPE is offered four times during the academic year, in October, in January, in March, and in June. You can start taking the CPE in any semester in which you will have 45 credits by the end of the semester. In other words, when you are registered for your 45th credit. Once you have 45 credits, you must start taking the CPE. If you have 45 credits and don't take the CPE, you will get an automatic fail. That's one way of guaranteeing that you will t start taking the CPE in a timely manner. It's to your advantage to take the CPE as soon as you can. If you pass, you get it out of the way. And if not, then you'll have the time to work on the skills you need so that you will succeed the next time. As soon as you're eligible to take the CPE, you should receive a letter or email from your college. If the college does not notify you, then contact your testing office. Now, how do you register for the CPE? To sign up for the CPE is a, is a very easy process. Uh, students have two options. They can do it online, and students can also do it in person. They go to the testing office. When you sign up for the CPE, you will be given a date, an appointment date, and an appointment slip that you need to bring in the day of the exam. This is the CPE appointment slip. You must bring this with you on the day of the exam. You will not be admitted to the test without this form. When you do it online, you need to print the appointment slip. When you register to take the CPE, if you do it in person, you will be given a printout of the advanced reading. And if you do it online, you may download it and print it yourself. You need to get the reading as soon as possible so that you can prepare properly for the exam. CUNY offers many different ways to prepare for the exam. The university provides a vast number of workshops to take advantage of at every school. shot and the reason why I did is because I went to the workshops and they did help. We ask that you attend workshops to give you a general idea about what the exam is, familiarize yourself with the readings. We provide you with technological assistance, interactive tutorials, uh, writing workshops. Again, all of these are support services that will already reinforce what you've already learned. I find the peer study group is very helpful because I get different ideas from different students. It helps me to understand the reading thoroughly. When I saw that the workshops were available, I took advantage. I went to most of them or all of them. Whatever I had time to go to, to the workshop, I went and it was very helpful. Take the workshop. That's it. The best way to find out about the CPE is to pick up a copy of the student information booklet you can also download that from the BMCC CPE webpage. When you register for the CPE, you get a CD-ROM, which describes the exam and also gives you some pointers. The CD, it was very instrumental in helping me just uh, get my bearings straight and know what I needed to do, especially for the diagram exercises and the pie charts. So there are lots of resources, whether you've never taken the CPE and just want to find out about it, whether you're about to take the exam or whether you've taken it and failed, there's lots to help you prepare. Now we're going to go over some key test taking tips for the CPE. You'll see how easy it is to prepare yourself for the exam. Take your regular class assignment seriously. All of your academic work is practice for the CPE. Read the CPE student information booklet. Attend each type of CPE workshop that is given. Make sure that you pick up and study the Task 1 reading selection as soon as it is available. Read the exam directions carefully. Following directions is a critical factor in success. Come to the exam at least 45 minutes before it begins. Finally, show up. Remember, if you're required to take the CPE, then an absence is considered a failure. If you cannot make it to the exam, contact the testing office to see if you can reschedule. You can learn more about the CPE by logging onto your college website 
or contacting your CPE coordinator on campus. We'll talk more about Task 1 and Task 2 in subsequent programs. One of the best things about passing the CPE is that you gain confidence in your own ability to do the kind of tasks that college demands of you <laughs> and that lie ahead of you in the workplace. And what do we do with the CPE? We hit a grand slam! We passed it! I'm extremely confident in everybody in this room. We will become the next mayor of big cities. We will become the next CEOs. And we will be the next college president. Start here. Go ahead.